Welcome back, guys, to Factorio Friday Facts with me, Massive Dynamic. Each week, we read, react, and review the Friday Facts that are posted, and we go over it, and we comment on it. So stick around. We'll get right into it in just a second. Welcome back, guys, to Friday Facts number 384, Combinators 2.0 by Coverex and Clonin. And we start out, I've read this one already, by the way, guys. But anyway, we start out with a little bit of an insight from Coverex that's a little bit surprising. And um, then we get into some really cool stuff about combinators, which if, you, if you've ever used a combinator before, you're going to love this. So it starts out, hello. We're going to focus on the general improvements of the way circuit network is used in the game. I wasn't using it often because all the problems combined made it too big of a hassle most of the time which was an indication of problems that's interesting that Coverex, i think this is by Coverex, either Coverex or clonin either one but anyway the devs didn't use combinators because of how difficult they were to use i, th I thought that was pretty um revealing but they fixed it so we improved each part of the process of using it a little from ui to feedback of what's going on to stronger, more accessible combinator functionality. I can say that it worked, at least for me. Once these changes were available, I used the circuit network way more in my latest playthrough and it felt good. So let's hope it won't be just me. And I'm telling you guys, you're gonna love this. If you've used combinators before, this makes them way easier to use. First, circuit GUIs rework. We learned over the years that it is always better to use disable enabled state on control elements which can be turned on or off compared to making them just disappear. Circuit control GUI was one of the last places in the game where we didn't apply it properly. Yeah, I always found this kind of weird that um, when you turn something on or off the, the different functions kind of, well, it says magically appeared out of thin air. I always thought that was kind of interesting, but I, I didn't, I guess I didn't pay attention, enough attention to it to say, oh, that's, that's a mistake in the programming. But yeah, this is the new way where you see all your options, they're always there, and you just click on which ones you're looking for, which makes a whole lot more sense. Okay, so <clears throat> you can see the functionality even before connecting the wire or activating the individual modes, which makes a lot of sense. With the current version in mind, it's hard to understand our previous design with the checkboxes being disconnected from their parameters. It makes the UI not only more chaotic, but also bigger. Yes. Well, we learn from our mistakes. Okay. Circuit slots show the values. Now this is fantastic. This is one of those features that we just can't imagine living without anymore. And it is so simple, we wonder why we never did it before. In short, the signals in the slots of the circuit GUIs will show the current signal value directly in the slot. Now this is gonna make your troubleshooting so much better. So you hook up an inserter, which it's interesting, it's apparently hooked up to a furnace. I don't remember that you could hook up to a uh, circuit network to a furnace before. Pretty sure you couldn't, but apparently now you can. But uh, yeah, this inserter is connected to the furnace and it shows that there's four steel uh, on that wire already, four steel, which is great. And the control signal is showing four uh, uh, brick, which is cool too. Um, so yeah, here's the right rail signal. It shows the value of the signal that you're looking for, the value of the red signal, your uh, check signal. If you're checking, uh, your check is already one, you're checking what you want it to be uh, looking for. That's really great. Same thing here with your offshore pump. It shows the value of the, uh, the coal on the circuit already. Also, the accumulator sh value shows the value, which is great. You don't have to go, well, I'm, I'm not going to say that because they're going to say it in a second. Um, so anyway, the slots showing the values, which is fantastic. This makes it super simple when setting up a condition to know what ballpark of value you need to set it. It gives immediate feedback during the process of setting up the connection or condition without having to close the GUI and hunt for the information in a nearby power pole toolkit. Yeah, because that's what you'd have to do. If you're checking like on a accumulator value, you'd have to, you hook up your accumulator, you have no idea what the accumulator is doing. You'd have to get off of it, hover over the power pole, see where it is, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this is way better. You got immediate feedback. Okay, so Decider Combinator 2.0. Now this is pretty cool too. 
The decider combinator's function is to help make logical decisions. For instance, if iron plate is greater than 10, turn on a lamp, it can only process a simple, uh, I'm sorry, a single condition, which is touted as a feature for the simplicity and eloquence of design that you build up a complex machine from many simple parts. Now that's kind of telling too that it's touted as a feature because that's, you know, their response to everything. Oh, that's a feature, not a, not a, not a design flaw. <laughs> okay. So anyway, however, in practice, it made its use even slightly in even slightly more complex situations cumbersome. For example, if you want to enable a lamp when your chest has 100 steel, 200 copper, 10 coal, you would need quite a few decider combinators. Yeah, in that case, you'd need three, one for each condition. And then you'd have to have, you know, you'd have to output something, some like a check mark or something, some other, an A or a, uh, another sim signal that you'd have to then calculate. But anyway, what was a funny realization is that using train schedules with the circuit conditions, you could make yourself a much more powerful decider combinator. Yeah, which a lot of people did. So anyway, so it felt that while simplicity is good, it was too simple and was making basic setups more complicated than they needed to be. It was also awkward trying to troubleshoot some circuit setup, opening all the different deciders to see what is happening and where it went wrong. So yeah, they're, they have troubleshooting in mind, which is great. So we decided on a few key features of what we call Decider Combinator 2.0. Okay, so here's the new features. Multiple conditions with and or combinations, sort of like a, a, a train schedule. Quick visual representation of the signal state. Selection of input between red and green wires. Now that is really cool. And multiple outputs, which is very cool also. So here's the new Decider Combinator. Okay, so you've got your conditions and you can set whether you're looking, you wanna check the red or the green wire. So if your condition, your green circuits on either wire is greater than or whatever, what signal on the red or green wire, you can, you can flip flop these back and forth. You can check the red versus the green, whatever. Um, I don't know why they're not showing that. That would be cool to show here like a signal coming in on the red wire and versus the signal coming in on the green wire, that would be pretty cool. Um, but anyway, so um, and then you can set your and or parameter over here. So if you wanna check this and this and, or this, uh, you have all those options. And then your outputs and you have multiple outputs. So you can either output a, a green check mark as a one, um, or you could set the input count uh, on either the red or the green uh, wire, which is pretty cool. Um, or, or you can output the red signal as the input count. Uh, that's pretty cool. Okay, and then you can add those. That's really nice. And then here's your input signals, which are listed. All your input signals, and here's all your output signals. Very nice. And then also add a description, which they'll get into here in a second. The GUI of the Decider Combinator 2.0, which we saw. Okay. With these changes, the usage of the Combinator became so much easier, intuitive, and transparent. You can easily see by opening the GUI what is the state of the signals, how the logic is constructed, and what the end goal of the decision is. Description for all Combinators. You may have noticed in a few previous FFF images, we now added a custom description field to all Combinators. This will make it easy to remember what the combinator is doing, how it works, or whatever. It is stored in blueprints, so will be invaluable for copying in someone else's insane contraptions. So now you can add a description, like this button here, add a description to your combinator, and then when you when you when someone copies and pastes that or blueprints it, then they get all the descriptions so they can also troubleshoot it. Because if you've ever tried to... to troubleshoot somebody else's uh, combinator contraption, it's nearly impossible because you can't tell what they were thinking when they did things that way. Uh, but now they can detail it all out, like just like real programming. So this is gonna be incredibly powerful, much more powerful now and more accessible, I think, to, to more people. Okay, so anyway, so here's the conditions and here's the input signal, output signal, and there's the description if the power on the um, accumulator drops below 20%, it'll kick on the emergency steam power with the check signal. And also it'll send a signal to the programmable speaker to sound an alarm. Fantastic. Okay, input output on arithmetic combinator. 
Once we got used to the input-output slots of the new decider, we started to miss it when using the arithmetic combinator, so we added it there too and made it a side-by-side -side layout, which is really cool. Okay, so here's an arithmetic combinator. You've got your input and your output, and you, so you're taking each signal, multiply it by a negative two. So here's your input signals on the red circuit, the green circuit, and here's your outputs, and everything's multiplied by negative two. And you can even add a description. So that is really nice. To have the instant feedback when you're dealing with combinators is going to be unbelievably powerful and so much easier to deal with. Okay, so this one is, now I keep saying cool, 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 but this is just cool. Um, the selector combinator. We hinted a, a new combinator type a few times before, and it was certainly interesting to read about all the different guesses people made. This post from Kalunda from Reddit seems to be the closest guess, so congratulations to winning the guessing game. Let's see if I can pull that up. I haven't looked at this yet. Um, so let's see, where's the guess? Um, okay, where's the guess? I haven't, I haven't looked at this before guys, so where am I not seeing? Everyone's been close, not close enough. Uh, I'm looking for... Oh, here we go. Okay, see the previous thread. Okay, from the icon, we know it has both inputs and outputs, so it's unlikely to be a transmitter, and it's unlikely to connect to the production graphs. Based on the symbol, my personal guess is that it sorts signals by value and passes through only the signals with the highest value. If you have a network with some kind of item requests, um, e.g. missing items in orbit, you can use that to find the item with the biggest de deficit. Automated rockets can send only one item at type at a time. If you want to avoid building a, a separate silo per item, then such a combinator is important. Oh, that is a pretty good guess. Okay, let's go back. Um, yeah, that was a pretty good guess from Kalinda. Congratulations. Um, which I think they say, yeah, congratulations on the guessing game, Kalinda. So if you've seen this, Kalinda, congratulations. Oh, good job. Anyway, this is the selector combinator. The primary function of it was motivated by a specific operation which was very cumbersome to do and practically impossible to do in a generic way. The function is indexing signals to process them one by one in some additional logic. For example, if you have a list of needed materials, you can use the selector combinator to index the first item, another to index the second item, etc. So here's the GUI for the selector combinator. You can select the input with your index. Um, and then you can sort them by either descending or ascending. Um, and then count inputs, random input, stack size, rock capacity, quality transfer. Okay, it's going to detail all these in just a second. So it has some specific uses and modes, which is still subject to change. So you can output the signal at the given index, sorted from biggest to smallest or vice versa, which is very nice. Output the count of input signals. So then you could chain these together so that you can have uh, each progressive um, combinator check the next signal. Output a random signal from the inputs uh, with a custom un update interval, which is kind of cool, randomness. Um, output the stack size of the input item. Output the rocket capacity of the input item, um, which is going to be useful for space age. So kind of exactly what, um, what was his name? Kalinda said, uh, transfer the quality of an input signal, more of that on another day perhaps. So quality, checking the quality of items is going to be great. So some of these could have been solved with custom signals in other places, like a stack size signal for arithmetic combinator to output the stack size of items. But we decided to go this way for cleanliness of design and better discoverability. Since the scope of the selector combinator is quite broad, there is also room for further functions we could give it. If you have some ideas, we would welcome them. Okay, so this is not the last post about circuit network. Since the decider combinator's ability to specify from which wires it should read is very nice, we plan to make more improvements in this direction also on other places. There are a few things entities do with circuit network, but it is for another time. As always, let us know what you think in the usual places. 
So there's more to come about combinators. They're definitely considering uh, your suggestions. So go ahead and leave a suggestion if you have something. Uh, I myself am not smart enough to make any suggestions, right? At least not at this moment. I might come up with something, uh, but it'll, I'll have to give it a, a thunk. But uh, uh, anyway, this is uh, really good news, really cool. Lots of new uh, stuff to play with. I can't wait to get my hands on these new combinators for a few of my, I mean, I use them occasionally. And when I do, they are fiddly because of having to go out and check your signal uh, on a power pole and all that stuff. Uh, but this is going to make it real nice. So there you go, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Come back next week. We'll see what they have to say next week on the Friday Facts. Uh, number 385 will be next week. Uh, so we'll look forward to that. And otherwise, check my series out, Factorio Towns. We're on season three. Uh, we're starting to work on Blue Circuits pretty soon. So you can check that out. It's Factorio played a whole different way. Uh, so either way, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.